Hello everyone and welcome to a most amazing game that was suggested to me today uh, via email. Uh, it's a game between a Grandmaster and a Fide Master. Now sometimes um, uh, lower rated players will just obliterate uh, top Grandmasters like we've seen in a couple of my previous videos that I've made uh, and uh, those games can be very very interesting but uh, sometimes it's just not the case and it wasn't the case in this game. It was uh, a game from the 44th uh, Olympiad uh, pl played in China and it's a game uh, between Grandmaster at Han Fauzi uh, and a Fide Master uh, Perparim Macaulay. Now, uh, you, you, you guys will absolutely love this game. It's been a while since we've had a game. Uh, this awesome, it's, uh, I, I, I was thinking about including it in my sorcery series, but um, I don't know, it's, it just doesn't feel right um, adding modern games to the sorcery series. Like if I found a, a game that was this crazy from, let's say, 19, 1900s, uh, I, I would include it, but uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, it's hard to say, you know, how much is engine preparation, how much is actually uh, over the board inspiration. Uh, so let's just enjoy the game and then you guys can decide whether it belongs there or not. And uh, we've had some incredible games by uh, Fauzi uh, already. Uh, I think I've covered two of his games and both of them were really awesome. Uh, I will put a link to them in the description below if you want to check it out after the video or maybe even before this video. Uh, it's up to you. So let's check it out. Uh, Adham has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4. We have pawn to c5. Uh, Perparin goes for the Sicilian defense. We have knight to f3 e6 and now pawn to d4. So just striking in the center, captures, captures, and now pawn to a6. This is the con variation and uh, it uh, can um, uh, create some very exciting positions. We have bishop to d3, continuing development. You know that knight to f6 is coming, so it makes sense to have the pawn defended. Knight to f6, castles, and now queen to c7. And here uh, the standard idea is queen to e2, but in the game we have bishop to e3 and this is a uh, a setup, um, uh, you know, uh, enjoyed by many, uh, many attackers. Uh, as you know, Paul Morphy also uh, loved putting his bishops on d3 and d3, and uh, so does uh, Adham, as it seems. We have pawn to d5, strike against d4 pawn, knight to c3, and now d captures on e4. Knight captures, and now just knight b to d7. And there are a couple of games that reach this position. Known moves are some like queen to e2, knight captures on f6, pawn to c3. Uh, but in this game, we have pawn to c4, and it is now as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. So let's see what happens here. Uh, knight captures on e4 makes sense. Um, here, um, a Perparim is saying I would very much love capturing here and then winning a tempo with knight to f6 because your bishop on e4 will be hanging. So that's exactly what happens. Captures, captures, knight to f6, attacks the bishop, and now bishop comes back to f3. We have bishop to e7. Preparing the castle and, uh, you know, uh, remember this for the rest of the game. Bishop to e7, preparing the castle. And here Adham plays a move that uh, you never want to see on the board. He plays pawn to c5 and this is just so annoying. Uh, it's a move, Yeah, I mean your pawn is not defended and you can capture it with the queen and the bishop but you really can't. If you capture it with the bishop, rook to c1 just wins the game on the spot. Uh, doesn't even matter if you move the queen uh, because b4 of course is coming. If you move the queen, let's say to e7. Then comes knight to e5, attacks the queen, attacks the bishop twice, and there's nothing to do. If you capture on f5, bishop captures on c5, attacks the queen, prevents the king from castling, rook f to e1 is coming, it's a game over. So capturing with the bishop is out of the question. Capturing with the queen, not much better, just knight captures on e6, opens up a double discovery, then knight captures on g7, and black's entire position is ruined. So uh, the best thing for you to do after pawn to c5 is the move that you prepared with bishop to e7. Best move is to just castle here, and okay, then you maybe face pawn to c6, but then you decide what to play, let's say knight to d5, and okay, everything is perfectly fine. However, after this pawn to c5 move, uh, we have pawn to e5 by Perparim, and now comes uh, queen to a4 with check. We have bishop to d7, and now another annoying move preventing Perparim from castling, pawn to c6. How do you how do you face this? Uh, well, B captures on C6. It's a good move as any. Uh, and now you'd expect something like knight captures or bishop captures even, but no, knight to F5. And what is this? What is knight to F5? What what is he doing? Well, of course, if bishop captures on f5, then you leave the c6 pawn undefended. Then bishop captures with check, or even queen captures on c6 with check, uh, forces you to trade because now the queen is hanging, and if you trade, then bishop captures with check, and then you pick up the rook on the next move. So instead, after knight to f5, 
pawn to c5 was played attacking the queen here and it seems like you shouldn't be able to capture on g7 with check because then king to f8 and your knight will be hanging and also the queen will be hanging but now look at this knight captures on g7 with check king to f8 and now how do you continue bishop to h6 and now uh, black really does not have all that many options uh, the absolute best move is to uh, capture the queen. So bishop captures on a4, but now knight to e6 with check. Uh, this is a double check, so you have to flee. Uh, king to g8, and now knight captures on c7, winning back the queen. Now the rook on a8 is hanging. We have rook to a7 attacking the knight, and now uh, my absolute favorite move of the game. You'd think that the the you know a temporary queen sacrifice would be my favorite move, but no, this is my favorite move, and that is rook to e1. Finding rook f to e1 really makes you a tall like attacker because you have to, like really all you have to think about is how to checkmate that black king and then you find rook f to e1. Now the point is if rook captures on c7, then rook captures on e5 threatens mate in one and the only way to defend this, well not the only way but uh, the only maybe reasonable way is knight to e8. Now okay you can you can defend uh, but and uh, the g5 square is covered by the bishop but now look at this rook a to e1 now preparing rook captures on e7 and now you don't really have all that much knight to g7 will have to be played you will give back some material here captures captures and captures and the white is up only one pawn but the white's position is much more active white has the bishop prepared the super active rook on the seventh rank and the black will have to. Uh, wait a few more moves before uh, getting that rook into the game if it will at, at, at all be possible. Okay, for the moment you can't really, if the knight moves you can't play rook to 8 because the bishop covers that but um, it's not going to be easy to develop. So instead after rook f to e1 we have pawn to e4 challenging the bishop here and now another beautiful move knight to d5. Again saying that you don't care. Okay, uh, obviously if you... Uh, capture the bishop here then the uh, bishop on e7 hangs but what happens if you just capture the knight well if you just capture the knight then rook captures on e4 again threatens checkmate rook to g4 check you're gonna have to block with the bishop and then rook captures on g5 will be checkmate so here you would have to play bishop to c2 to attack the uh, the rook here and uh, well this was in fact uh, played in the game but the problem is uh, if you play something like bishop to d7 which also stops checkmate then rook to d1 would happen and look at this now uh, the, the knight cannot move. Uh, uh, if you play bishop to e6, which of course is just silly, then just rook captures on d5. And again, bishop cannot capture because of rook to g4. And if you try something else like bishop to f8, which is your only move, then we just trade. Bishop captures, king captures, rook captures on d5. And again, the game continues with white being much more active. Uh, the bishop to c6, of course, is impossible due to rook to d8. And... Uh, uh, white will have an excellent game uh, but uh, and this might even be the the top line for black this weird line that we've shown but in the game bishop to c2 was played now comes rook to g4 with check bishop to g6 that was the idea behind bishop to c2 now comes bishop captures on d5 winning the material back and finally bishop to f8 we have bishop uh, back to e3 and now bishop to g7 putting pressure on the b2 pawn but here just pawn to h4 saying that uh, you don't really care about this because then pawn to h5 is happening uh, or in other words bishop captures on b2 you're just going to attack the bishop and now you would love to go back so h5 doesn't hurt you but if you go back uh, then rook to b8 check and that's it bishop to f8 you just play h5 or, or even better bishop to h6 you just get checkmated uh, that's it black, black would resign here so after pawn to h4 Rook to d7 is played, sort of preparing bishop to b2, uh, but now just bishop to b3. And now it seems that you will be able to capture on b2 because there is no rook to b1 followed by rook to b8 with check, uh, but you'd only think that. Bishop captures on b2 is played, and now rook to e1. Uh, we have bishop to c3 attacking the rook, rook to c1, and now bishop back to b2. Rook captures on c5, now threatening rook to c8 uh, with check, amongst other things. And now king to f8. King to g7 probably a little bit better, but um, uh, you just lose a, a piece if, if you remain on the g file. So king to f8 was played for that reason. But now pawn to h5 and you, you don't care you don't win the bishop because you will take away the g file from the black king. Bishop to b1 uh, had to be played and now comes rook to c8 with check. And he was in this position on move 33 uh, that uh, Parvary Macaulay resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Now... Uh, it seems like you will be able to defend uh, because if king to e7 uh, the rook is captured the bishop will capture back the problem is 
Uh, if the king moves to e7, you will first give a bishop to c5 check, which now forces the king to f6. King to f6 will be played now. The king blocks uh, the bishop's uh, defense of the rook, and I just rook captures an h8, will uh, capture a full rook, and of course, there's no point in continuing this. So after bishop, rook to c8 with check, uh, Perfanim resigned, and a, another spectacular victory uh, for uh, Atam Favzi in this remarkable game in the 44th Olympiad that was played in Chennai last year. So yeah, I haven't seen this game, even though it was played last year, uh, but that's the problem. No one suggested it up until then. Now it was suggested to me, and I am very, very happy that it was, and that I was able to share this masterpiece with you guys. And if you enjoyed this game, uh, I also uh, very much encourage you to check out two other games by Adham. Uh, first links in the description below. Uh, you, you, you guys will enjoy them. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Mazin Elsarak, Blank Terra, uh, Petr Marinov, uh, AMD Ryzen Enthusiast Group, and GolfSoftware.com for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of everything that's happening in the chess world, and of course, checking up on your uh, wonderful suggestions uh, such as this one. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.